A very warm welcome to the third part of our series on antenna arrays. In this module, we shall discuss the last case of excitation that is same amplitude and any phase excitation. Further, we shall discuss pattern multiplication using a few examples. Request you to have your writing aids with you while you go through the video. This will help you understand the content better. Let's begin. Let's now proceed towards a more general situation. Consider the case of two isotropic point sources of equal amplitude but of any phase difference delta. The arrangement of the sources is already discussed and remains the same as before. The total phase difference psi between the two fields from source 1 and source 2 at a distant point P in the direction of phi will be given by psi is equal to kd cos of phi plus delta where delta is the phase difference added between the two sources. Let's understand this through a vector diagram. The vector diagram that you see currently is of a case where you are fed it with equal amplitude and phase. Now we will consider a case where we have introduced a phase difference of delta. So I have the reference and this is the case when there is equal phase and equal amplitude feeding and now we have included a phase difference of delta by 2 on either side. So my even that is field due to source 1 is equal to E0 E raised to minus JK R1 E raised to plus J delta by 2. Source 2 emanates E2 that is E0 E raised to minus JK R2 E raised to minus J delta by 2. I would like to make a point clear here that here the vector E1 and vector E2 are represented in terms of R1 and R2. Remember, R1 and R2 are the phase terms and they can be substituted by the far field approximation of R minus J, K, R1 and R2 can be substituted by the far field approximations where R1 is equal to R minus D by 2 cos phi and R2 is R plus D by 2 cos phi. So I am not showing it in terms of psi but I am showing it in terms of R1 and R2. So let's begin with our mathematical uh, computation to find the no, net electric field at a dis distant point P. So using the vector diagram, let us find the total field at point P. The total field is given by EP equal to E1 plus E2. I'll substitute for E1 and E2. And subsequently, I will now substitute for R1 and R2 using the far field approximations. So after substituting for the far field approximations in the phase terms, then we will separate out E raised to minus JKR term and rearrange the other terms. So having done this now, the terms in the bracket can be substituted by cos of KD by 2 cos phi plus delta by 2. This is from R Euler's formula. So, our net electric field at a distant point P is given by 2 E0 cos of KD by 2 cos phi plus delta by 2. Now, let us normalize the equation. And here we have. Note that I have not shown a point, a, a step here of taking mod of EP since it is understood. By now, we are and we have understood that and hence I have skipped that step here. 
and now after normalization you have the normalized electric field to be cos of psi by 2 plus delta by 2. Let us now study the concept of pattern multiplication. Linear array antennas find wide applications in wireless communication systems. Typically, arrangements with uniform spacing between array elements are applied to gain highly directive radiation patterns. Although the numerical capabilities of modern computing infrastructures allow the numerical analysis of complex modern antenna array configurations, pattern multiplication technique is still applied especially for numerical optimization and estimation of antenna array arrangements. Now, before we move on to understand the actual, actual technicality of pattern multiplication, let me give you an idea as to what we will be covering under this topic. Firstly, we will understand the technique of working of pattern multiplication. Secondly, we'll understand the limitations of this technique. And of course, while we do all of this, we will also understand the advantage of working on this kind of a technique. So let's now understand pattern multiplication with the help of an example. Let us consider a simple case of two ideal dipoles spaced at a distance d apart along the z-axis. Okay. Since the elements are along a common axis, that is the z-axis in this case, we can call this as a collinear array. As usual, we are interested in finding the net electric field due to the two sources at a distant point P. Now here, please note that the sources or the antennas are along the z-axis and hence, the distance R from the axis containing the array to the distant point P makes an angle of theta with respect to the z axis. So, R1 and R2 are the paths of radiation from source 1 and source 2 to a distant point P. Now, we understand that the distant point P is much much far away from the source that is it is in the far field of the antenna array configuration and hence for a distant observer it looks as if the radiations are in parallel lines as shown on your screens. So this helps us to apply the far field approximations that we have studied. Fine. So, let's move on to check as to how do we compute the net electric field. We also understand that the path difference between R1 and R2 is given by H cos theta and this path difference into phase constant beta or K will give us the phase difference. Fine. So, let us look at the mathematical computation. The total electric field at point P is given by E P equal to E 1 plus E 2. So, what is E 1 and what is E 2? Now, understand that E 1 here is a dipole antenna. It is a Hertzian dipole antenna and hence I will be taking E 1 by the expression for a Hertzian dipole, the electric field expression for a Hertzian dipole. So, now let us compute Ep which is nothing but it is the superposition of the two fields E1 and E2. So, E1 is given by J neta K i naught L sin theta 1 upon 4 pi R1 
into e raised to minus j k r1. Note that this is electric field due to the first Hertzian dipole, and similarly e2 is the electric field due to the second Hertzian dipole. I will now substitute for e1 and e2 in e p, and I will also substitute the phase terms r1 and r2 here by the far field approximations and the amplitude terms r1 r2 will be equal to r the angle theta1 is approximately equal to theta2 which is approximately equal to theta so i can apply the far field approximations and rearrange and i arrive at this equation so the equation within the bracket can be written as 2 cos of kd by 2 cos theta fine now we will make a note of a few important aspects of this equation on our screen observe that the first element or the first part of this equation is called as the element factor the element factor term is exactly the same as a single Hertzian dipole equation that you have considered for E1 or for E2. The only difference being that the element factor considered here is the same as that of a single Hertzian dipole placed at the origin at a distance of r from the far field point P and it is at the center of the array. So, what has happened is the original field of the dipole has been doubled, which we expect since we have two dipoles that have driven with the same amplitude and phase as that single dipole previously. Now, secondly, there is a multiplication factor. And this multiplication factor of 2 cos kd by 2 cos theta is called as the array factor. The original element pattern, that is the element factor, is now modified by multiplying by a multiplying factor which is called as the array factor. There are a few important points regarding array factor that you need to bear in mind. First of all, the array factor results purely from summing the phase terms corresponding to the distances involved in the array. Here, for this specific example that we have taken, you see that the array factor is equal to e raised to plus j k d by 2 cos theta plus e raised to minus j k d by 2 cos theta which is nothing but addition of the phase terms with respect to the two Hertzian dipoles that we have considered. Secondly, notice that the array factor is only a function of phase constant k, element spacing d and the observation angle theta. In other words, array factor is a function of the location of the antennas in the array and their relative excitations. Thirdly, we need to notice that the array factor has no dependence on the pattern factor or the pattern associated with the constituent elements. The array factor is separable from the total field expression. Having understood this, we now know that the total pattern due to the array configuration at a distant point P is the multiplication or product of the array factor and the field produced by the constituent element. This property is called as pattern multiplication. For a single element array, the array factor will be equal to 1. Now with this, let us take an example of two vertical half wavelength dipoles which are placed along the z axis and the distance of separation is lambda by 2 so our d will be equal to lambda by 2 
we need to find the array factor which we have we, I've taken the expression from the derivation we have just done so array factor is 2 cos of psi by 2 so I need to find psi to find psi we need d so we have substitute for d and you get psi is equal to pi cos theta so I have array factor is 2 cos pi by 2 cos theta so now we will plot for uh, the array factor before that in order to solve by pattern multiplication we have just said that the pattern multiplication is product of the array factor and the individual element pattern or what we call as element factor so we know that it's a hertzian dipole and it is placed vertically along the z axis so if this is the z axis it's placed vertically and we know that in the e plane it has a figure of 8 so the individual hertzian dipole placed at the origin has a radiation pattern which you see on the screen so now let's take the plot for the array factor if we plot the array factor for different values of theta then we have the array factor we have plotted this array factor before in one of the examples we can check that out 2 cos of pi by 2 cos theta so we have that array factor plot as this distance of separation between the two dipoles is lambda by 2 now the platinum multiplication will be product of these two that means i need to solve i need, need to take a product of both these uh, element factor and the array factor if you note it logically a product of both the element factor and the array factor results in a shape of pattern which is similar to what you see as this figure of 8 so you can take it on face value as a figure of 8 but the values will be ef into af so e theta is the radiation pattern of the array configuration at a distant point p for two hertzian dipoles placed along the z axis with this distance of separation of lambda by 2 and the net pattern is a figure of 8 so now let us take another example here we have two horizontal half wavelength dipoles along the z axis with lambda by 2 separation okay so all that has changed is that instead of having vertically placed uh, sorry vertical half wavelength dipoles we now have horizontal half wavelength dipoles nothing else has changed so both are still along the z axis so the distance of separation is lambda by 2 so if we think logically our array factor remains the same it does not change array factor will still be 2 cos of pi by 2 cos theta now why is there no change in the array factor array factor does not depend upon the radiation pattern of the individual element it only depends as we have already discussed on the phase constant k element spacing h and observation angle theta we have also no known that array factor is a function of the location of the antennas in the array and their relative excitations that is all it does not depend upon the pattern of the element that is there in the array configuration so now in comparison to our earlier example we there we had two vertical uh, half wavelength dipoles which were placed along the z-axis and the figure of 8 you can visualize so we, here we have two horizontal half wavelength dipoles along the z-axis okay so now my single element factor which uh, which is due to the half wavelength dipole is like this a figure of 8 in this fashion because now it's a horizontal dipole this element factor has to be multiplied with the array factor due to the two 
half wavelength dipoles along the z axis and mind you the array factor has not changed so the array factor which you see remains as it was in the in our earlier example now what is the resultant of the multiplication of these two patterns so multiplication of these two patterns is something that we need to find out so let's move on to find the resultant i have the element factor need to multiply it with the array factor how do i find the product it's very simple just take superimposition of both these and you will arrive at this how what do i mean by that superimposition by these means i'm looking for a common area so the element factor i will multiply it with the array factor and what results is the pattern that you see with four lobes in the designed pattern the gradient pattern that you see here so this is the common area between the element factor and the array factor and that's the resultant product of this pattern multiplication so remember remember the comparison between the two examples that we have dis just discussed one thing that you have to notice is that when you have you have to take care of the element factor look at it carefully whether it is horizontal or is it vertically placed and also note the array factor so let's take another example here we have two vertical half wavelength dipoles along the z axis with a distance of separation of lambda by 4 okay so array factor will be cos of psi by 2 because it is fed in equal phase and amplitude okay so i'll find psi which is pi by 2 cos of pi okay subsequently i'll find the array factor which is cos of pi by 4 cos of pi we can normalize it by dividing it by 2 so it will be normalized array factor will be cos of pi by 4 cos of phi so please take normalized array factor which i have shown here okay the element factor will be due to the vertical half wavelength dipole okay so that's a figure of 8 now multiply it with the array factor if you plot the array factor you see that it is uh isotropic in nature so you have the plot for array factor the ones in yellow are the half wavelength dipoles lambda by 4 distance apart now the product of these two will be superposition of these two elements so if you take a product of this these two you are supposed to take the common area the common area will be what you see in the diagram here so e theta is the electric field at a distant point p okay and due to the two half wavelength dipoles along the x axis so that's sorry this is this is e phi and not theta corrections so this is the end resultant electric field at a distant point p due to two vertical half wavelength dipoles so you see that pattern multiplication is a very important and a very simple technique to arrive at the final radiation pattern due to an array configuration it helps to draw and visualize the radiation pattern of the array and uh, it is a very simple technique where you just need to take a product of two patterns that you arrive at with no mathematical computations laborious mathematical computations you can arrive at the final radiation pattern now what are the limitations of pattern multiplication the major drawback of this method 
is the fact that this technique inherently neglects the inter-element coupling which means the mutual coupling between the elements is not taken into account. If the spacing between two adjacent elements is high enough, the inter-element coupling can be neglected. If on the other hand, the spacing is below a certain limit, the inter-element coupling increases and will influence the overall directivity of the antenna array. So this is the major disadvantage of pattern multiplication which has to be borne in mind. I now would like to show you something very interesting. So let's go on to EM groups. So now I am on emgroups.etbyu.net. This uh, here we have a very interesting demonstration. This demonstration illustrates the pattern multiplication principle for an array of five horn antennas all fed with equal phase and amplitude. So you can see all of them are arranged in this fashion. Okay. And the distance of separation between the horn antennas is equal to lambda. Okay. So let's look at the antenna patterns. Now, if you observe here, you have the element pattern which is due to a single horn antenna whose aperture is 1 lambda by 1 lambda. So this is the radiation pattern due to a single horn antenna. Then subsequently here we see the array factor for d equal to lambda and now we look at the pattern. So the pattern, final pattern at a distant point p that is in the far field from the horn antenna array. Here you see that the radiation pattern is very very directive. Okay. Compare the array pattern, the radiation pattern due to the array with the element, with the individual horn. With the individual horn, you see that the directivity is much lesser in comparison with the directivity of the array configuration. The above references were used in preparation of material for these lectures on, an, on uh, array antennas. With this, we end another part of our lecture series on antenna arrays. Hope you enjoyed studying with me as much as I enjoyed teaching you all. For any queries, you can always get in touch with me. See you soon. Thank you.